All right, so we bought a farm, but what do we do now? All right, so here's the deal. That house over there has electricity. We're gonna share that electricity. We're gonna bring a line here right to the middle. And then we can bring electricity to this whole region over here with this spectacular view. I picked up these two books, uh, one on tapping water markets and another on power and water in Central Asia. It's complicated. Um, there are many opinions about how to get water the most efficient way and energy efficiency. So in this video, we're gonna use GiveFlag. We're gonna go through the latest research and let's go. Welcome to GiveFlag. So in this video, we're going to walk through how to set up a water infrastructure project in Rwanda using GiveFlag. So let's start with our own farm. So our farm is here and um, this is the plot that we, in the last video, uh, went to Rwanda, went to Yamada, and we purchased this, this piece of property. Now, we've got to get water and electricity from over here. Now, over here, you will see that there is a residential area, and then you can see here is where we begin the more you know farming, uh, agricultural uh, area. So most of this area in here does not have water or electricity. So once we get it to here, we then want to share it uh, about. Now, how do we solve this problem? So first, you just, I'll log into my GiveFlag account. And of course, here I have my AI persona team of nine professional AI bots. And I want to ask them questions about getting this set up. So my last question was how to get approval from the Rwanda Water and Forestry Authority, which I found out from a previous chat in here. Um, and so usually when there's an online search that's quite intense that needs to go through several web pages to get an answer, Lena will handle that. And so let's see what she's saying. Okay, so specifically um, for our plot, uh, which authority um, should we reach out to? So I'll put that in. Of course, I'll get an update on kind of what's happening. It, the system first starts by understanding my intent. So she's putting that into a search query and you can see she's going through a few web pages. So the team is like, okay, it's not, we're not gonna have a whole discussion about this. Lena's got this. And so we're, Lena's doing her search thing and we're waiting on her to just give us the data. This is a lot of the time and energy that you would have used kind of scouring the internet, searching, reading, doing everything. She's doing that all for you and in under a minute. So there we go. All right, so it appears that the Ministry of Infrastructure in Rwanda is responsible, yes. Um, okay, Ministry of Infrastructure. They would like to be the ones to contact. Okay, so got the wrong authority, Should so the Ministry, these guys. Contact information isn't specified in search results. Of course, that's, that's, the, that's always the hard part. Oh, accidentally clicked on a link. So, okay, now they've been making efforts. Um, so here's a report. So this is pretty cool. So I'll click on this report. And this is quite interesting. So what I usually do is I'll, if I don't find a PDF, I'll copy the URL. My favorite site is web to PDF. So I'll click convert and I'll convert the page into a PDF file so that I can upload it and then ask questions to it and also understand a little bit more about it. Great, now I can download that file and now it'll look like this. So this is exactly what I needed. So this is a 20 page report. And just looking over it, it's talking a bit about Rwanda, foreign investment, 
All right, well, let's just add it in. So the cool thing about GiveFlag is the more files you upload, the smarter your team gets. So I'm just going to go and upload that file uh, down here and then my process begins. So I'll just let the red flags and everything load up. Um, so this is a full analysis of every, you know, of the whole document that's happening. Let's go over a few of the other documents that I've uploaded um, when looking at this. So um, I found out from the chat that there's Feed the Future, which is a US aid program geared towards infrastructure and water development. Um, that report was pretty interesting, but as you can see here, some of the biggest areas uh, around infrastructure development from these aid programs uh, are lack of clear measurable indicators, inconsistent goals and proposed methods, lack of clear strategy for climate viability, um, and it kind of just goes on, uh, inadequ inadequate plan for private sector engagement. So it's basically taking this file here and it's breaking it down. Like, you know, these are a lot of words and it can be hard to digest. But what, you know, what you can get from GiveFlag is the ability to kind of x-ray through all that. Like, this is a lot of data. And, and, and get right into the fact that there's a lack of specific mitigation strategies, unspecified budget assumptions, potential risks with private sector participation, uh, lack of details on SMEs meeting standards. This is always a big problem, right? So, and then also the green flags. So things that are really good about it or, or, or things that could really be enhanced. So cross-sector collaboration, technology integration, private sector engagement. So when it comes to having discussions about these lengthy documents and their policies, um, you can do that. But also for infrastructure planning, it's important to understand all of the programs. So when it comes to USAID, I can kind of see here clearly that there's not really a clear plan on how to do this, which usually makes me assume that it, it's kind of for USAID people and their friends, right? Um, versus maybe people like us who, you know, I'm, I'm an American, but we're, we're, we're actually trying to do something. And I find that there actually is a gap and you can see between these documents uh, of people who actually have planned out and are actually trying to, um, or have experience doing things versus people who are kind of, I, I don't think cronyism is the right word, but you know, and so, yeah, I kind of looked at Feed the Future. I sent that over to them. I said, hey, you know, I'd love to discuss this with you. Um, so I looked at this water project. Um, so I asked Give Flag about water projects, and then it pulled up this research paper. Um, so this is a research document, and it's specifically guidelines for the development of small scale rural water supply and sanitation products in East Africa. That's great. Rwanda's in East Africa. Uh, this should really provide some great insights. The problem was, um, it, it kind of came back down to the same thing where we had a potential overemphasis on environmental protection. Um, whereas the project was about bringing water, you can kind of like x-ray through these and see, okay, with a lot of this research, there's like a grant behind it or there's some organization. And so Give Flag is really great for kind of just figuring out, oh, oh this is one of those. Uh, they're not talking about the technical aspects of doing it. Um, and, you know, inconsistency in guideline application, lack of clarity in annual review frequency. The document does not specify frequency of the annual status review, which could lead to inconsistencies in the actual practice of reviewing the status of the projects. This is a big one um, for these overarching big things, uh, big, big projects, big funding things. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I think those are more, you know, if we get those partnerships, it's political. But, you know, we, we, I, we feel that things should be more of a meritocracy, and that's partially why we built GiveFlag. There's this project, blockchain project, that's trying to do interesting things around green credits and things like that, but, you know, dig into that platform where you're like, okay, maybe blockchain. But then you kind of find things like lack of detailed information on the issuance, unclear data quality and marketplace management, 
uh, incomplete risk assessment, unclear understanding of ecological and technological aspects, and then you dig into that and that can go crazy. Um, you know, viability of ecological protocol frameworks. So it's kind of like, oh, okay, so that, I'm not gonna say anything, but, um, oh, so then I looked at the laws. So this is great. So this is Rhonda laws. Um, okay, this one's small. So I, I love when I get a give flag and I get a small error like this. When I see red flags that, that basically say, oh, at one point they're saying number dot and then another place they're, they're lowercase in with this, it's like, okay, I love it. That red flags are very, very tiny. And so, you know, undefined terms, certain threshold, okay. So this, this shows me that, and this is another one where it's like certain terms that are unspecified or, or sorry, certain threshold, you can see they're leaving room for themselves but that room creates ambiguity. And when it comes to laws and ambiguity, there, you know, that, that's something that, that should be addressed. Um, inconsistency in tariff setting. The document mentions that the methodology for setting electricity tariffs will be determined by the regulatory authority in consultation with the minister in charge of electricity. However, it does not specify who the minister is, which could lead to confusion and misinterpretation. Absolutely, that could, you know, I mean, our, how do we know what tariffs we'll be paying on our electricity. So it depends on the regulatory authority consulting with the minister. Um, you know, and as you get more into this infrastructure thing, you realize that all of a sudden you're in government politics. And so, you know, vague definition of a person, okay, individual, corporate, um, ambiguity in terms, yes. So what I see here, you know, so then I can go into actually reading the document and that's the thing. It's like, okay, I, I walk into this document saying, all right, so there's some, there's some ambiguity in here, right? These are some of the infrastructure laws and it's in multiple languages, but, and you can see here, it, you know, these are kind of broad, right? Because it's not that long. So it's giving a bit of wiggle room, but that wiggle room can feel a little, you know, it, it's giving wiggle room to the administrators and I find a lot of times this is so that common sense decisions can be made, but a lot of times common sense decisions can turn into bureaucracy and a lot of red tape and, and inefficiency. So that's something to look out for. And, 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 and so actually, let's go, let's go back to the document that we just downloaded. All right, so I uploaded this one. This was the US government Wanda infrastructure document. Challenges and opportunities for foreign investment. All right. Inconsistency in foreign direct investment, direct investment figures. Okay, 2018 and then 2.4 billion. Okay, so something needs clarification there. That's not, well, we'll look into that. Policy implementation. Yeah, lack of clarity. Okay, so the U.S. government is saying the same thing that flagship. Like they analyze their laws and they're like, "Hey, um, you guys need to be a little more clear about the regulations." I mean, and that's important for foreign investments, you know. And and that, that you know these things need to be worked out. I mean, maybe that's something we should work on, just you know, helping bridge the gap here. I mean, because there's really no reason why foreign direct investment should be hindered because laws are ambiguous, right? Like. That's something that that is is slowing us down, but but you know we need to we need to we need to dig into that. Yeah, wow. You know, it's funny. <laughs> this this document is showing exactly what we just went over about taxes. So the, what we just saw in tariffs is what the U.S. government was reviewing all this stuff. You know, they got huge teams, and so they're finding the same thing that that we just found. Yeah. The, the, yes. 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 Okay, delay in VAT tax rebates for foreign firms it can take months. Okay, so we're, so foreign firms are supposed to get rebate tax rebates, but these can take months. Yes, I get that. Uh, yeah, so our we so if we develop infrastructure, we get uh, for our property forty five years. So forty nine years is the maximum up to, and locals get ninety nine years if they develop infrastructure. They can get freehold. So that's that's a big thing. 
And so why is that? That's not in their constitution. I can say that for sure because now, of course, just because something just because something's not in someone's constitution doesn't you, it, there are many bodies of law, uh, but if we do kind of cut over, let's just go ahead and use the search here. Constitution. There we go. So I got the constitution here. And what I can do is I can just click on it and then I can go here and chat with it. So what does this document say about land rights specifically? Learn how to spell specifically. Specifically for uh, foreign firms and locals. So I'm asking a question directly to the file. So one of the coolest parts about GiveFlag is once you upload the document, you can just ask questions directly to the file. And I can just get a straight answer. Um, and you can see here, the team says, okay, I have a file selected. They're gonna route this again, Natalina. She's our analyst. And let's pull her profile up here. So this is her. And all right, Zappian states, okay, Article 35, prop, a private ownership of land and other rights related to land grant by the state. Yep, 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 yep. Right? So it doesn't differentiate in the constitution between locals and, 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 and foreign firms. So it should not be encroached on except in the public interest and in accordance with provision of the law. So it can be inferred that we have the same rights. Now, of course, locals get double the, the length of time of ownership, but, um, but, or rather of a long-term lease, but the freehold should happen. And, and then we can look to other documents for information around that. So I can just cut this out. And then I think one of the most informative documents uh, that really helped us. Um, so we looked at some Chinese projects in water flows. Cities and agriculture, this one was pretty good. This was four days ago. And this paper, I'll just pull it up. Same thing, lack of measurable indica indicators, absence of comprehensive reporting system, unclear evaluation objectivity. Okay, you know, now the thing about these is that, you know, no one can be perfect, but as you saw with that U.S. government document, it the red flags weren't didn't find inconsistency specifically in that document, and so it talked about the inconsistencies and in what it was talking about for its red flags. And so the and, and as you saw with the land rights in the other document, with as far as Wanda's government, obviously put together by a lot of lawyers, there were less less severe red flags than what we're seeing here. So you can kind of figure out quickly. Now, in this instance, what I do, what I will do, is that I need to talk to someone. So here's what I'll do. Yamada Infrastructure Regulation Professionals. Let's spell infrastructure correct, professionals. And what this will do, so this is called the customer and vendor list, but it's not just for that. It will scour the internet, and you can see here. So now it's about to just find everyone related to this and then rank them for me. So it splits it into many different search terms uh, that are really good as far as using Google, like in URL and all these other code words. And it's finding these people. Look, infrastructure technical advisor, Marius Ruskow. Let's see, Jeremy M. Goldberg. Okay, he works for Microsoft. Oh, but worldwide public sector. Okay, see, never would have thought of that. South Asia Forum. And what you realize is a lot of this is global, right? It's not just, um, let's see, who is this? Okay, Bank of International Settlements. Okay, someone at Bank of International Settlements. Corp of Engineers, that makes sense because US military is kind of involved. Microsoft, yeah, that, I mean, Microsoft makes sense to a degree. Um, who is this? Department, oh, the Yamada Hospital. Okay, so someone involved in the 
building the hospital there, yeah, probably knows about infrastructure development. Okay, and it's just and and it's not that it's using all of these people, but see, it's finding the hospital there, and it's looking through for contacts for people that, um, so it's looking at this. Oh, zoning. Okay, I see. There was a zoning air, something going on over there. Anyway, I'll let that run. I'll get an email with all those people. Yesterday, I used this same thing uh, to find people related to water infrastructure projects, and. I found an amazing engineer. I got in touch with him, and now we're connected on WhatsApp. You know who you are? Hello. Hey, we're, we're, we're working on it. So that, you know, that's how I use GitFlag. Um, I, I, I use a lot of the document analysis, um, and you know, even files like these, um, these are helpful. So for example, I'll give you an example of, of something that Oh, here we go. Irrigation. So feasibility and impact of small scale pressurized irrigation systems on agricultural productivity. So it, it tells me what to look into. So now I know to ask questions about the application of levelized cost of irrigation, right? So I'm going to walk into a meeting saying, hey, what's the uh, LCOI there? Um, you know, this, this happens with research, you know, clarity and data collection analysis, but it, it lets you know, like this, you know, this study didn't do the best job in making sure that it clarified how it collected its data. I mean, we saw that one, you know, people were freaking out the other day about a Harvard review. And let me pull that up real quick. As an aside, I pulled this up a few hours ago. So Harvard did a study. And I'll pull it up here. And the study was on, man, look at all these names. This is Harvard, Harvard Business School. So <laughs> this study had a lot of people all over the internet talking about how at the end of the day, AI is making people much more productive. And look at all those citations. Must be true. And this is the chart that everyone, you know, they're talking about how the quality, you know, this was GPT only, this was the control group, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the consensus, and these are all fancy charts, was that, wow, GPT is gonna take all our jobs. And oh, GPT uh, isn't that good at math calculations and uh, but it helps with creativity, et cetera. But, you know, research and how it's con con conducted is important. And, and so one of the, the key areas here is that there are inconsistencies in the task duration. So like how they did their test. And, and look, there's a lack of context for task assessment. Document states the quality of responses uh, was assessed by human graders in AI system GPT-4, but does not provide details on the assessment criteria or process. Now, that is a glaring. In fact, I don't know why the AI system didn't put that at the top. If you conduct a study and then you're going to grade how well something performed, it would make sense that you would explain how the grading occurred. But if you're taking that out, I mean, and that's, you know, that, if you look at that huge document, you read it, you know, you say to yourself, wait, guys, come on. So you're not saying how you're, you're grading, you know, like imagine going and, and, and taking a test and then you get graded, you get, you get, let's say a B and then you say, well, how was this graded? And they say, well, we're not going to tell you, but we're going to put out a report about how you did. And, and then so it's, it's like things like that. Um, if there's anything AI can really help us with, it's, it's making sure things are done properly, right? And, and this is one of those things. Like, this needs to, we need to talk about this, Harvard. All right? You got my email. And, you know, potential for bias. It, it, they didn't say how the consultants were selected, right? They could have taken the smartest consultants and then, 
some of the worst performing consultants and put them in different groups, but we don't know, you know, if you could say it's randomized, but how was it random? I mean, that, that it's, these are important. These are, this is important. Now, I'm not, I'm not knocking the effort or the inquiry or the data. I'm saying that from medical research all the way out, how our experiments are conducted is so, so important, you know? And, and, and so, yeah, you know? So as a research tool, uh, GIFLAG is very useful. And, you know, um, I now have a few people I can reach out to, thanks to the, thanks, thanks to the contact search. Um, when there is a lack of clarity or there isn't information available um, for, for what we're doing. But overall, the goal is still, let's, let's zoom out, right? We're just this little ball here and um, we're not perfect and we're doing interesting things though in this world, aren't we? And look, here is a little tiny farm. I'm still, if anyone knows what this is, by the way, I zoomed in on this. Trying to figure out what this is, because I think it's a night and day type thing. Like part of it was taken at night, part of it was taken in the day. But that's fascinating. It looks like we know who to contact now to get approval. Once we get that approval, we can get some of the water from over there and the electricity and bring it into here and then spread it out. I found a really great document. Um, it's also good for educational content. So where is it? This. And so I just downloaded this. I mean, this is a very basic, if you're not a water engineer, on the different radial systems, ring distribution systems gridiron system this one seems to be the one so based on our discussions um that you know gravity supply pump supply combined supply um and so i ran this document this educational document and i put it into the context of what of what we're doing and so let's just let's just go ahead and ask it i think it's called don something Dun. There we go. So I'm going to select this file. So this is pretty objective. And I'm going to say, um, what are the most effective systems? Yeah, that's a, not the best question in the world, but when you're on in the pressure, under pressure of making a video. So let's see what we got. Okay. So it looks like combination of the radial and gridiron system. Okay, so the radial system has a centralized storage tank, which could be suitable for high water flow rates, while the gridiron system would prevent water stagnation. I, I like that idea. I don't like the idea of water stagnation um, through a combined supply method. Now, what I usually do here is, because so this is just her talking to the file, right? So I'll click off this file. And then I'll get my engineer and everybody going. So this is no longer the one we're talking about. And I'll say, okay, team, let's discuss. Do it right, but on a shoestring. You know, they say you can pick two of the three. Fast, cheap, and good. So if you want it, and you, you, you can pick two, so you can have it fast and good, but it's not gonna be cheap. You can have it fast and cheap, but it's not gonna be good. And you can have it good and cheap, but it's not gonna be fast. Sometimes when it takes a little longer, you'll get this notification here, um, and you can just wait for it to refresh, and you'll get your answer. Let's see what the team says. All right, team. Oh, this is Lena. I want the team to discuss. Yep, detailed analysis. 
regulatory compliance, budget estimation. Okay, Tim. Tim is our technical lead. He's a coder, but we'll bring him in. Tim, Andrew, he's our CFO, and Michael, uh, discuss. What do you think? Because I want different personalities, right? I, uh, Lena's great, but she's only got one perspective. Um, and so I want to get a diversity of thought in here to kind of pull out some of the best ideas, uh, different ideas, you know, some, you know, sometimes crazy ideas, you know. So you have your creative in there. You've got your finance guy in there. You've got your tech guy in there. And I think those guys right now will be the best. I'll bring in Jean. She's compliance. I usually bring her in towards the end because she can kind of, you know, slow down the party sometimes. And that, that's what compliance people are supposed to do. So not knock it in. It's, it's, it's important. And so these guys are looking through everything we've discussed to try to work out a, a workable, you know, situation. All right, here we go. Yeah, of course. Okay, so Tim's like, we need to look at modern cost-effective solutions for water distribution. For instance, solar-powered water pumps could be a viable option. That sounds expensive to me. Location and climate. Energy efficient and require minimal maintenance. IoT devices, I'll ask them later about which ones. Yeah, Tim. Yep, financial implications. Yes, significant cost. That's right, Andrew. We need to cost benefit. Yep, grants. Exactly. So, yeah, maybe we can get some help here. That's why I've been going through all these other documents, um, these grant documents, figure out which ones are. But that's the other thing. You know, even though a lot of them are kind of like they, they're, they're really long, but they, they, they say a lot of some of them about how they're going to implement their plans with hundreds of millions to billions of dollars, or they can be quite um, empty as far as the process, but uh, but you can kind of dig through to see kind of what they're really looking at. And a lot of times it's like, okay, this is about green. So say carbon, right? They're, they're looking for someone to say carbon. Um, and there's another document that I was looking at recently. It talked about carbon blindness, how we're not looking at all the other things like water. Um, okay. While I appreciate the focus, long-term sustainability of our solutions. Yay. Okay. So I need to pull in somebody. Uh, I'm gonna pull in Ryan. Ryan, best course of action that is non-obvious. This is my favorite keyword. Also, let's bring in Ben, oh, COO. Ben, your thoughts. Let's see what we got here. So Ryan's the strategic advisor. So he's the guy who kind of, he's invested a bit in the company, the hypothetical company. So he's, he's thinking very practically here and looking at the conversation. And then the COO, he's very much hands-on on, you know, we do this, we do that, we do this, we do that. So we got some of the ideas on the table now. Wow, Tim. Water powered solar pumps. All right. <clears throat> the human factor. All right, Ryan, I see you. Local community, of course. Yes. Yep. How will we, yep, transport everything over. There's a dirt road. Yep. All right. So this is where we pull in Nora. I want to pull in Nora for this. Nora. Let me know if that's not feasible and why. Let's get in Nora here, the accountant. All right, Nora has spoken. Took her a while. Infrastructure, installation, training. No, we don't, do we have to train people? The, yep, yep, that's obvious. All right, used or discounted equipment. 
Look for grants and subsidies. All right. And this is where our autonomous bots will be coming in because we're about to be able to send these guys off to do a lot of these work and work on the reports, reach out to people, get responses, and, and do all that. So that's going to be really exciting going forward. But for now, we've got a list of questions. You know who we really need in here. All right. But let's make a decision. So uh, someone who can make decisions here quickly. CFO, can you make if um, let's just get a plan. All right. We're just we're like CFO, just give us a plan. We got we got the concerns of the accountant. Wait, what? And I have been using this a lot. I went over my 1,000 a month um, messages and view plans. I can go down here and I can just top up. Add some, add some minutes or rather some messages to my account. And there we go, one-time payment. And that'll be through MumblePay, which is a UAE-based company. That's kind of messed up. Maybe we should make it so that, like, if you hit your tier, you should keep your message. All right, so we'll try that again. Hey, Tim. Or, well, hey, CFO. Can you go back with Tim? If you go back to Tim and work with him on a viable solution, let's assume no grants. Um, let's just make this work the old fashioned way. Just build some infrastructure. Um, please include legal fees for consultants uh, to help get the regulatory approval for the pipe line or the rather the water and electricity distribution don't want to kill any animals uh, as well as a bit for the feasibility study. Um, want it under three months, if possible. Please take into account previous brainstorm and feedback. There we go. So now we're golden. Um, I upgraded my plan so I can have, you know, that was unfortunate, but I guess a, a nice plug for premium upgrades. Prices are about to go up, by the way, just because it's it's quite expensive to. All right, so what do we got? Week one and two, two thousand dollar feasibility study, equipment procurement, water pumps, pipes. All right, five thousand dollars. Cool. Hey, that's. Yeah. Regulatory three thousand dollars. All right, putting money in the community. Seven, labor, our system. Six thousand, community training. Manage and maintain the system. Two thousand. Okay. Sound good. All right. So first, we need to get this feasibility study underway. We need two grand for that. This is only for water. All right, we'll circle back on electricity. All right, so there we go. Let's see. I'm gonna meet with our contact that we found through Give Flag, and then we're going to uh, walk through this plan, and then uh, see what we can do. Thanks for watching.